Good morning, folks. We've got a lot to cover today and we'll be slipping in where to find these news programs if the Congressional Select Committee gets their way and this channel disappears in a few days. One place that will always carry the show is spaceweathernews.com, where we find the last day on our star was dominated by coronal holes. Wouldn't be surprised if that northern patch is connected to the North Pole. The active areas are cresting the limb on the left today, while plasma filaments continue their cow-jumped-over-the-moon impressions. Solar wind plasma speed in purple continues dropping out, keeping geomagnetic conditions all quiet, and we're on to the weather. This is footage from New Zealand as torrential rains caused washouts and landslides that cut off portions of some destinations on the island. The worst of that has thankfully moved on out to sea. Meanwhile, the temperature shift in the western U.S. is diabolical. The 70s were here at my house two days ago, and this morning, thermometer reads negative one. There is a tremendous discrepancy in temperature distribution in North America at the moment. Mostly it's driven by the jet stream, so you can see why it was warm, and now it's cold in the west. But the warm is still taking on the east, bringing with it a considerable amount of storm activity, though. From now through tomorrow here, we see it's going to be wet with severe possibilities, and nothing but cold and snow behind and north of the system. We're also not getting much help from the polar vortex, which is kinked here as much as the jet stream, with a partner cell helping drive the southward flow out of the Arctic. Folks, yesterday we saw the Parker probe's accounting of plasma returns to the sun from the outer solar system, but today we're looking at the high-energy proton bursts, much in the same way we have described solar wind effects hundreds of times. The intensified portion of the streams can be like a shovel blade, bunching up the slower-moving plasma out ahead of it. Well, normally we're discussing coronal holes and ambient solar wind bunching, but it happens with the high-energy protons, too. And in one of the best presentations ever at our conferences, Joan Burkpile delivered an excellent talk on space weather back in 2018 and included this exact bunching of protons. It's called the stream limit, and it's a big deal for the biggest solar blasts. Her video is linked below, and the stream limit portion is about halfway through. Also have linked below a NASA article and video on their solar orbiter set to launch this month, it will help diagnose and analyze the starts of those proton events, as well as do more macro-scale things like studying solar magnetism and get us our first polar images. Now we're going to ease into the more complex science with an aesthetic piece from EcoStress here. Prettier than the colors, however, is the description of how plants live on diurnal cycles of circadian rhythm just like animals do, reminded right now of the story about their ultrasonic screams when stressed. And we're all getting reminded this week of one of the weakest aspects of the global change story. Sea level rise, gonna get ya. Except the concept that it can rise in some places while dropping in others means they mischaracterize what they are seeing. Telling me sea level is rising here, falling there, rising here, falling there. It's an ocean, a body of water. What you're seeing is actually two things. First, the rise and fall of land from post-glacial rebound and other slow crawls of tectonic geology and the effects of tides and storm surges, which is not the same as sea level rise. The number of times I've seen them use high tide marks or storm surges is outrageous, and those do imply a number of changes but are not the same ones that would be implied by a uniformly rising ocean, which does not exist. Up next, folks. While the electroquake science is not much questioned like it was when we first published about it, heck, there's a satellite out of China and Italy tracking pre-earthquake electric signals, and the pre-earthquake processes textbook by the American Geophysical Union is mostly about electromagnetic precursors. But still, the field is young and still feeling itself out. But on the other side of that, before we were called crazy for saying these things in 2011, there were already scientists who'd claimed to know about it for a long time. This year 2000 paper was recently posted to Archive, along with one from 1988. Outstanding to get those out into the public for free to see some of the foundations of the field that led them to being certain that geomagnetism, earth electric currents, and charged particle activity can tell them where an earthquake is going to occur before it does. This work went back and was able to find the pre-earthquake signals for quakes from the 70s. We're going to end at GBT, the Green Bank Telescope. The observatory was in on the latest fast radio burst study, tracing the faint repeaters of those we thought were one-off events, but more importantly, the Green Bank Telescope is able to study dusty plasma, here doing so around the gorgeous star-forming region W43. 
This and ALMA are precisely the type of tools that will confirm the plasma halo and co-rotation studies at the larger scales of galaxies, and then galaxy clusters, and perhaps even one day at the cosmic web. Of course, we might need the larger GBT telescope for that one. See what I did there? We greatly appreciate your support. I understand Kathy Castor is having a challenging week dealing with angry observers, not to mention the free speech crowd. But of course, if she wins and we disappear from YouTube, we'll still have the morning show at suspiciousobservers.org, as well as spaceweathernews.com, and also reposted to our Facebook and Twitter pages. I do hope, however, this is not made necessary. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.